This video looks at the effect of lead compensation on margins. Now, the early videos, 1 to 8, covered the definition and the computation of margins and the impact of changing simply compensate again on the margins. What we're doing now is we're looking a lot more at dynamic feedback, so compensators that have got more than just a constant in them. This particular video is going to look at lead compensators. Now, a reminder for you, do look at the Bode diagram videos, and that should say lead, on lead compensators first, just to make sure you've got a good understanding of what they do. Some background. We're going to ignore the gain margin in this particular video, not because you don't need the gain margin to be good enough, but because it's not usually a main design parameter. Instead, design is usually based around phase margins. Now, the other thing is we're going to use or calculate the phase margins from the bow diagram. We're not going to do it analytically. And finally, we will use tools like Caesar Tool and MATLAB in order to do the number crunching. You might need to do a pen and paper um, problem for an exam at some point, so do practice those. But in the long term, it's far more efficient to use computing tools. Now, just a reminder, the easiest way to get the phase margin is to remember that it's the distance above the minus 180 degree line at the gain crossover frequency. So what is a lead compensator then? Well, the lead compensator takes this form here, k s plus a over s plus beta a, where beta is bigger than 1 and typically less than 10. So what are the sort of properties? The steady state gain is smaller than the high frequency gain by a factor of beta. So the low frequency gain is going to be k over beta, and the high frequency gain is going to be k. The phase is zero at high and low frequencies, and the phase is positive around the corner frequencies. And again, you're reminded, do look at the Bode videos if you want to look at this in more detail. This is just a summary. So here's a typical diagram for you, showing you what the um, lead compensator will look like. What do you notice? You see you have low gain at low frequencies and high gain at high frequencies. Similarly, if you look at the phase, you see you've got positive phase. Now, the reason this arrow is here is to tell you something really important when it comes to lead compensator design, and that's here. We would expect the gain crossover frequency to be somewhere close to the peak in this phase plot. And that's very different from what we did for the lag design, as we will discuss as we go along. So, some more comments. In lead compensator design, it's the phase characteristic which is the one that is used. So we ignore the gain characteristic, but focus on the phase. So a lead has got a positive phase, and that means we can rotate the Nyquist diagram anti-clockwise. In other words, we can rotate it away from the minus one point and improve the margins. So positive phase rotation allows us to increase the gain of the system, or if you like, to increase the bandwidth. And the main reason, and I'll circle this one, that people use lead compensators is to increase the bandwidth, or to get the best bandwidth that you can. Of course, this does come at a price, and that is that you will perhaps have more input activity. You'll be more aggressive with the actuator. Now, in terms of the gain characteristic, we will observe that and we'll make, take some notice of it, but it's actually not part of the main design procedure. So here's a summary. You'll notice the lead compensator is the opposite of the lag design. So with the lag design, we focused on the gain plot as our design procedure, and then just catered of the phase plot later by putting the corner frequencies well to the left. Well, when we're doing a lead design, I put this in blue, you'll see we focus not on the gain plot, but on the phase plot. And we cater for the gain plot by some other tools, and we'll talk about those in a minute. So some design principles. What we want to do is modify the phase plot of our system near the critical point. So a question you might ask is, what phase rotation do I want? 
and Y, and you notice the maximum phase rotation you can get is about 55 degrees. That corresponds to beta equals 10. Now, what people will typically do is they will specify the desired gain crossover frequency. So you have to say what gain crossover frequency you want, and you also need to say what phase margin you want. And once you've done those two, that will fix everything else. Now, the corner frequencies of the lead are chosen to bridge the desired gain crossover frequency. And we'll demonstrate this by example. And this will ensure that you get the maximum phase rotation at the point where you need it most. Now, just a reminder here, you'll see that there are two, now I've called them arbitrary, arbitrary in the sense that they're degrees of freedom, decisions that you... So these decisions then are the choice of the desired gain crossover frequency. Now, when I say a choice, this will often come as a result of a system design requirement. And also, you're going to have to choose the desired phase margin. And as you will realize, this decision is to some extent arbitrary, because it's not always clear what phase margin is required to get the performance that you want. Now, the focus of a lead compensator is on improving the bandwidth. So getting faster responses than you would from, for example, a lag compensator. So let's go through this design procedure using a bow diagram. First of all, we need to choose our desired gain crossover frequency. And we're going to assume that this has come from some criteria, so it's not totally arbitrary. And you'll see that's what we've done here. So we said, let's assume that the desired gain crossover frequency is here for whatever reason. What comes next? Well, what we want to do next is make sure that we put the phase rotation peak at that frequency, but we need to know how much phase rotation is needed. So we want the peak at the gain crossover frequency, but we also need to know how big is that peak. Now, you'll notice what we've done here is we've put down some corner frequencies with these purple crosses, and that gives you the plot that we've got here. But if I was to do a different example, let's assume that I'd put the corner frequencies here and here with those red crosses, then what you will find is you'll still get the peak at the same place, but it's a much smaller peak. So the key thing is you see how the corner frequencies bridge where I want this peak, because the peak will be the geometric mean. If I put the corner frequencies close together, as in these red, then I'll get a small peak. If I put them further, further apart, I get a larger peak, and indeed, if I was to use these black crosses and put them even further apart, I could get a larger peak. So what you have to decide is how big do you need this peak to be? And once you know how big you need it to be, then you can work out where to put these corner frequencies. Now, what about the gain characteristic? What we're going to be doing is making this particular frequency the gain crossover frequency. And that tells me what value this gain has got to have. So I'm going to have to choose this gain to make sure that I have the right gain crossover frequency. So how do I use that insight in order to get a mechanistic rule? So number one, choose the desired gain crossover frequency. Now the best choice is not always obvious, but logically it's going to be higher than what you can get from a simple gain design because you're trying to increase the bandwidth. Otherwise, there'd be no point. Next, find the rotation required. So you're going to be solving an equation a bit like this. The argument of G plus A, A being your desired rotation, equals your phase margin minus 180. Use a lookup table to find the value of beta required to get the phase rotation that you need. And I would recommend you just use beta rounded to the nearest integer. It's often good enough. And here's the table that we derived in the earlier video series on Bode diagrams. You'll see that, for example, for beta equals 2, you can get 19 degrees. Beta equals 3, 30 degrees, and so on. Up to beta equals 10, you can get a 55 degree rotation. Next, choose the gain of the lead so that your chosen omega is indeed the gain crossover frequency of the compensated system. 
The way you do that is you design the lead with this formula here. Now this might look somewhat complicated. You'll see root beta over the modulus of g of j omega, s plus omega over root beta, s plus omega root beta. But if you substitute your omega into modulus of g, modulus of k, you'll find you now get 1. So just have a quick look at this formula here. You'll notice you've got your desired gain crossover frequency omega there. You've got your beta, which you've read from the table, that comes into the formula here, here, and here. And then you have to introduce the modulus of g in order to make sure you get the correct gain crossover frequency for the compensated system. So there's your mechanistic design. Perhaps not a particularly nice formula, but at least one that you can write down explicitly. So some observations. The two arbitrary choices, the choice of the desired gain crossover frequency and the choice of the target phase margin. Now these two can interact, as you will see in the examples, because if you change the desired gain crossover frequency, you may have to change your target phase margin. And the reason for that is the maximum rotation you can give is 55 degrees. And why have I given you that note? Because if you were going for your archetypal phase margin of 60 degrees, okay, which corresponds to the argument of g is minus 120, then it means that the gain crossover frequency that you can actually achieve that is corresponds at best to a point where the argument of g is minus 175. And that's because minus 175 plus 55 gives you minus 120. Now that will be easier to show in the bow diagrams, so we'll show that in a minute. The choice of gain cross crossover frequency could be inferred from the requirements given for a particular system. For example, it will typically be, this is the desired bandwidth I want for my closed loop system, or this is the required rise time, which tells you about bandwidth. Now, the ideal phase margin is typically around 60 degrees, but if you have an open loop unstable system, you won't be able to get 60 degrees, and you'll have to go for some other values. You're reminded you can always use fine tuning once you've used your mechanistic design to give you a start point. And more systematic methods will be given in later videos. So here's an example then. G equals 10 s plus 2 over s, s plus 1, s plus 4 squared. <coughs> and what we're going to do first is use the simple gain design and the lag design covered in the previous videos as a start point, as a reference for what can we achieve with our lead, what's a realistic target. So what have we got here? You'll see we've put down the lag design and the simple gain design from the previous video. Now, the other thing we've put down is you'll see we've put down this line at minus 175 degrees because that tells us the point um, which is a limiting point for which we can get ourselves to 120 degrees. So let's add some lines and that will be clear. OK, if I set that vertical line there to be a desired gain crossover frequency, then what you will see is in order to get a 60 degree phase margin, if I move myself 55 degrees here, then I will get a phase margin of 60. So I cannot have a gain crossover frequency which is higher than that, because if I go for a higher gain crossover frequency, I can no longer get a 60 degree phase margin. So that vertical line gives me a maximum gain crossover frequency if I want a 60 degree phase margin. What about this next line? Well this next vertical line is the current gain crossover frequency. You can see that here, it crosses zero decibels there for the lag um, compensator. Now I'm going to call that the minimum gain crossover frequency because the purpose of a lead is to make your bandwidth higher. So there's no point aiming for a gain crossover frequency lower than you've got from your lag. So in other words, the range of gain crossover frequencies that I can ask for lie between these two lines, the one corresponding to the lag and the one corresponding to the intercept with a minus 175 degree line. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose my target gain crossover frequency 
to be 1. That's this point here. Now that's an arbitrary decision because we just want to illustrate what you can do with a lead. And you'll see that's roughly halfway between the minimum and the maximum. So what are we going to do? First of all, we've said we want to get a 60 degree phase margin, which means I'm looking for the intercept with a minus 120 degree line. So if that's the case, you'll see where the minus 120 degree line is. And I've also said that I want the crossover frequency to be 1. So let's mark that down there. There's my desired crossover frequency. So if I go to there, then you can see that tells me that I've got to lift the plot from where it is now to where I want it to be. So there's my desired gain crossover frequency, 1. It's just marked in. There's a, OK. And then you can see I've got a phase lift required of about 20 degrees to move the plot from where it is now to intercept with this minus 120 degree line. So we need a phase lift of 20 degrees in order to get a 60 degree phase margin. So here's my key points. I've got omega equals 1. I want a phase lift of 20 degrees, which tells me that beta has to be about 2. So all I've got to do now is plug those numbers into the formula. So that's what I've done. And if you plug them in the formula, here is the compensator that you get. So I plug that compensator in, and let's see the new Bode diagrams. So here they are. And what do you notice? Well, first of all, the lead, as expected, has got a higher bandwidth than the lag. You'll see that the lag, there's your gain crossover frequency here, whereas the lead, here's your gain crossover frequency. So as expected, I've got a higher gain crossover frequency. I've got a higher bandwidth. OK. You'll also notice we've got a higher high frequency gain, so quite a lot higher all the way along here. But the benefits at low frequency are less clear. You'll notice there's a switch down here that, in fact, the lag has got a higher low frequency gain. You'll also notice that the lead has lifted the phase plot in the critical region. So at our crossover frequency was here, can you see there's been this lifting of the phase plot, which is giving us a better phase margin than you got from the simple gain design or the lag compensator. I had a different example now. This one is open loop unstable, g equals 3 of s, s minus 0.1, and therefore it's going to give us some different challenges. So first of all, because I have this open loop right half plane pole, from my Nyquist stability criteria, I know I need a counterclockwise encirclement at the minus one point. But if I do, sorry, I should use blue, this current Nyquist plot, and put in my encirclements, OK, I should get right angles here, so I'm being a bit clumsy, all right, then what you will see is that currently you've got a clockwise encirclement, not a counterclockwise encirclement. <laughs> Now, if you attempt a simple gain design, you will see you cannot stabilize this system. You cannot change the encirclements just by scaling this Nyquist diagram. And therefore, we need to do something else. Now, I can actually indicate with a simple sketch what you need to do. You need to be able to bend the Nyquist diagram like this. So if I bend the Nyquist diagram like this, you'll see I'm now going to get a counterclockwise encirclement as required. But how do I bend the diagram in order for that to happen? Well, what I've done is essentially rotated. You'll see I've used a positive rotation in the region of the minus one point in order to rotate the plot and therefore get the encirclement that I need. OK, let's look at this boat on a boat diagram now and see what this tells us about lead compensation. So we know we need positive phase rotation. So here's the Bode diagram. Now, we have a problem. The maximum uplift we can get from a lead compensator is 55 degrees. And given we need to get ourselves above this minus 180 degree line, the logical thing to do is to focus on this region over here on the right, where we're already close to minus 180 degrees. You will notice, however, 
you cannot get a 60 degree phase margin because if I add 55 for example to this value here let's say that that was minus 190 and if I add 55 that's only going to get me to minus excuse my maths I think minus 120 not minus 125 is it minus 100 and um, my head's gone now I think it's minus 135 isn't it so either way the point is the maximum phase margin you can get is going to be something along the lines of 45 degrees which is not 60 and you have to recognize that when you have examples of this type and it's implicit that you cannot choose the gain crossover frequency to be somewhere around here because then with your 55 degree phase uplift you would only have a tiny phase margin something like 5 to 10 degrees and very poor performance and therefore you need to have a high gain controller because you're pushing yourself right over to the right hand side of these frequencies you need a high um, gain crossover frequency which means you're going to get a high bandwidth now I'm going to make an arbitrary choice here of omega equals 2 as my target frequency and that's, that's this line here okay so that's going to be my target gain crossover frequency and I'm going to use the maximum uplift I can so I'm going to use beta equals 10 which gives me a 55 degree uplift so there's my choices omega equals 2 phase lift 55 degrees beta 10 I put it into my formula there's my standard formula here and if I put those numbers in this is what I get root 10 times s plus 2 over root 10 over 1.25 and then s plus 2 root 10 and you'll see that the modulus of g at my chosen frequency of 2 is 1.25 which is where this 1.25 has come from so let's put that in and see what we get and here's our new Bode diagram so you see in this region here how we've got the uplift that we wanted we've lifted the diagram up so we've now got a positive phase margin and indeed that's about as good a phase margin as we can possibly achieve you'll notice the gain crossover frequency is here I think there's a thing there and the gain crossover frequency is at 2 radians per second which is what we expected because that was a fixed part of our design so in summary the lead improves margins by phase rotation lead compensators are high gain controllers although they do tend to have a lower gain at low frequencies and this implies you'll get more aggressive input signals and perhaps more fatigue they allow the bandwidth to be as high as possible and certainly higher than with a lag compensator hence and this is important you have to specify the bandwidth you want first because the whole point of a lead is to increase bandwidth well how much bandwidth do you actually want you will lose some gain at low frequency so you might need an integrator or some other gain recovery in addition and that will be covered in later videos it will amplify the noise and so that has consequent effects on the input so you can get a lot of fatigue or overactuation. so you don't really want to use a lead unless you have to and that's summarized in this purple box because it's a high gain strategy with high bandwidth it won't be as safe however it will be essential for open loop unstable processes